Oh hey, didn't see you there. Today in the Jock Science Kitchen, we're talking about movement variability. Okay, so the tools for success in a chocolate chip cookie. You got your oven mitt, a spatula, very important. chocolate chip cookies. You could have uh, varying types of sugar. You've got your, your light brown sugar, your dark brown sugar, or you could have granulated sugar, molasses, powdered sugar. That's one type. Or you could have uh, you know, your type of variability in types of chocolate. You could have milk chocolate chocolate chips, dark chocolate chocolate chips, bittersweet chocolate chips. Today, the chocolate chip cookie I went with was a light brown sugar, granulated sugar, and a uh, milk chocolate chocolate chip. And I think they turned out pretty darn good. They're a little bit hot. My fingers are a little burned. But that's about that. So, uh, that's movement variability in the, uh, the human biological system. Kinesiology. The universe is vast and full of mysteries. Far off planets, alien life. One of the biggest mysteries lies beneath your own skin. In this episode, we answer the questions that have been burning on your mind since the beginning of time. How does my body self-organize to create and shift to and from stable movement patterns? Why do I have two right hands? We will tackle most of these questions with signal noise and movement variability using real-life illustrations. Because at Jock Science, we put the brain in the brawn. Variability has been implicated as being a product of noise, and could even be synonymous oh, with sweet, noise. And when we say noise, we don't mean that kind of noise. Noise within a biological system has nothing to do with big trucks or yelling at thieves. For our purposes, this kind of noise refers to the minor variability throughout the electrical transmission of a signal intended to produce movement. Noise within a system can produce variability in the execution of a movement. Here we have a dangerous game with a lot of money on the line. We will show what is happening in his system to produce these movements. Here we will visually demonstrate how a system can have noise during the process of producing movement. All of what you are about to see takes place in your body each time of movement is executed, give or take some steps. Here we have a sensory neuron awaiting a signal from the external world. He is the first in the chain because as humans, we use sensory information to guide our movements. Here, the sensory receptor receives the signal and he is rushing to deliver it to the central nervous system. The central nervous is taking this new information, inspecting it, and he used it to give the bowtied carrier a message the bowtie delivery man now gives that message to the next nerd, who is now analyzing and solving the Rubik's Cube. Now, at this point, you may think this analogy is falling apart, but the purpose of this is to illustrate the many different processes that are involved during the transmission of a signal from the brain to the motor units. In other words, 
Each different step in this relay highlights the different tasks that the body must accomplish to carry a signal from smaller to larger tasks. This could include action potential transmission, biochemical reaction rate fluctuations, and many more. Now the nerd is carrying a loaded message to the Power Ranger cell. Our cell is ready to receive, and he is hit. Now he struggles to deliver the message to the next step in this convoluted chain. He has data he is delivering in the most epic fashion. Will he make it? Yes, he will. The PR cell needs to recharge. Now the blue fiber is ready to transmit the final signal to execute the long-awaited movement. He received the signal, and now he is going airborne, and the motor impulse to execute the movement has been completed. Let's see what kind of movement was produced in our knife game from this relay. might be wondering, how does this relate to noise? Each of these wacky steps you saw could experience minor variability if done again. The timing of each message could be longer. The Rubik's Cube could have been a little unsolved. The rubber band gun might have fired a different direction. These are silly examples, but the point is to highlight that there are different processes in the body that could each produce minor variability on the way to movement, even though the same chain of tasks might be performed in the body. An actual example of cellular noise would be the timing of action potential arrivals at each synapse or motor end plate. As mentioned earlier, this could result in variability in movement. What is variability? Variability? hell's that? Oh, I know what you mean. That's like, that's like when they, they tell us they're going to take our jobs, then they don't take our jobs, then they give our jobs back. Now, man, it just don't make no sense, man. It's, just, it's over here, and then it's over there, and then it's in between, and then it's right on, and it just don't make no sense, man. So our taxes are getting given back, and then they take my taxes one year. They just can't make their damn mind up. I just got the same job, man. I've been running the same truck since 96. I don't even know, man. Boy, he was awfully close to the definition. We mean variability in physical movements. For example, if you write your name twice, both results won't be identical because of variability. Rather than defining variability in one fell swoop, we will draw out the explanation through showing what affects movement patterns. Our friends over at BBC have live footage of a bloomin' in its natural habitat. This will demonstrate how anticipation can affect movement. This week on Nature's Wildest Attacks and Spooks, we have a wild in the Jacksonville wilds, a wild blooming. Now these creatures are, are real feisty little buggers. Now what they like to do is they like to sneak around in the ferns and they just they pop up the back and down and, and what they do for entertainment is they go around just spooking their prey. Now they don't eat their prey. They actually photosynthesize crazy little animals. Crazy. Now what she's uh, what this prey's doing right here, she we believe she's checking her surroundings on her on her cellular device. Oh my goodness, where's the bloom? He snuck around behind that tree, and we have no idea where he is now. Oh, she's excited for something. We don't know what she is. Oh, that's the bloomin'. Oh, this bugger has no idea what's gonna happen. Okay, here he comes on the approach. He's going down. Oh, he's sneaky. Sneaky little bugger. Oh, here he comes. He's, he's approaching. Here comes the final approach. This girl has no idea what's coming. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Here it comes, and he attacks, and then how's the attack? Oh, good God. There he goes. 
girl walking with a normal gait pattern has just been spooked by the sneaky blue Oh, and now she sees him. Her gait pattern, she's anticipating a new attack. Her gait pattern has completely shifted. Now she's walking up to where she thinks the blue is. So that sneaky bloom and that little bugger behind the corner. What's he gonna do now? Oh, he pops out and spooks her again. Great stuff. As the BBC said, anticipation affected the way she walked slightly. She was walking cautiously. This girl most likely does not practice walking scared, but she immediately adopted that movement pattern. This is because variability in her normal walking pattern allows for spontaneous construction of new microcomponents in her walking pattern. This is a new attractor state. There are many ways that one can walk, and each attractor state has slight variability. This allows for the stable shifting of attractor states. To better explain this subject, a crash test dummy and a red Power Ranger were caught on candid camera walking. Variability can also be present in balance. During simple balancing tasks, the body moves about the ankle and the hip joints to maintain upright stability. While standing perfectly still, there are still minor movements about the ankles, but we will see how an external constraint affects the balance strategy. The crash test dummy looks ready for the world. Let's push him. and he falls immediately. Now, we will push the Power Ranger. He stays up with great skill, and he is adapting to the physical constraint of pushing. His ankles and hips move around violently, and this demonstrates the critical spike in hip and ankle variability before moving to a stable attractor site. Now, the ankles and hips usually move in an anti-phase motion when greater balance demands are placed on the body. Anti-phase means that when the hips move right, the ankles move left. An in-phase movement pattern would imply the opposite. We will demonstrate these two movement patterns in the water. Here we see a swimmer treading water. Both of his arms are adducting as his legs are kicking alternately. His arms are moving in phase this way and his legs anti-phase. Intention plays an overriding role in movement selection. He can switch arm movement patterns to in phase if he wanted. He can also use no coordination and intentionally use an unstable movement pattern, even if he drowns. As we near the end, we want to make it clear why variability in movement exists. Here you see the Power Ranger running with a bunch of tennis balls. This might be the first time he has ever performed this task, so how can he immediately come up with a stable coordinative structure for this task even if he has not trained running like this? The answer is variability. If he ran normally with no variability, his body would only be trained to run normal, leaving little room for adaptation to constraints. His leg would fall in the same place every time, and he wouldn't be able to stably do this carrying tennis balls. However, because he possesses movement variability, his body naturally can find and assemble new attractor states temporarily to meet the task constraint. He can even adapt movement patterns mid-task if another constraint was added. Running is not the only task that benefits from variability. Variability exists in every type of movement you can imagine. 
and it is present so that you can function as adaptive human beings or power rangers. While noise might be synonymous with variability or produce variability, the outcome is clearly functional. Hope you learned something today! And if you didn't, just watch it again! Godspeed to all you jocks and nerds! Peace!